Hi, Bloody Recapped here. Today I'm going to explain thriller movie. Strawberry flavored plastic. Keep your eyes open and stay focused. A series of unsolved murders in New York City in 2016. In the parking lot, a man is heard screaming for help. Behind a car, standing in the middle of the parking lot, a man finishes the body and throws an axe into the trunk. It's Noel. He tells of his longtime and fulfilled dream to buy a car, namely an 85 Buick Regal sedan. He realizes he forgot to get rid of the suit, so he leaves the car and throws suit in the trash. He claims he's been seeing the visions since he was a kid, helping him become himself. He drives away and leaves the body behind. This is where Noel talks about his dissatisfaction with the ethnic norms people have created and it has caused many wars. He believes that people see him as a danger and in that case they are only fear in his eyes. He tells us that he has to fulfill two to five orders a month. He has been with this company for almost 10 years. But here he works like a normal person, 40 hours a week. Errol, the cinematographer of this film, tells us that Noel was supposed to serve 16 years for a double jealousy murder. But for good behavior and psychological stability he was released in 2015. But a little later it turned out that he wasn't really sitting anywhere. There was a string of murders. But they couldn't find him. He was another maniac. But you could say elusive. They instruct him and explain that as soon as the memory card fills up it should be given to Errol. There's a spare, as well as a mount so you don't have to hold the camera with your hands and attach it to your body. Errol asks how many people know about his double life. He answers that only they do, because he trusts them as much as he needs to. In the reading room, he tells us that he's been single for two years now. He had his first and last girlfriend Michaela and they were together for three years, but broke up because of a mismatch of goals in life. He still loves her, but she never found out about his activities and also explains to make it okay because he completely separated the two areas of his life. He killed his first victim in 2002 at the age of 17 and it was a stranger. In the car, Errol tells them that they are tired of waiting for approval from the corporation and were lucky enough to find Noel. He goes to get himself some water and chips for the cameraman. They see him beating up a woman. They drive off and he yells back that he just wanted an energy drink. At 2 a.m., they get a voicemail from Noel, asking them to forgive him for his behavior and the audio ends. In the morning, Errol is discussing with his wife Lana how they will celebrate their son Brian's birthday. But Noel shows up and Errol rushes to show him his son, and then he calls Errol aside and apologizes again for yesterday. Errol accepts the apology and leaves. Errol tells Lana that Noel is an ex-junkie, and she doesn't want him around her son. But as it turns out a little later, they do celebrate Brian's birthday together. A voicemail message from Noel on August 15th, 2016. I got a phone call today from Michaela. I haven't seen her for at least a couple of years. I ran into her in town then. She... She has a child. She had my daughter. I had a little girl. I don't know why she told me now if she didn't then. Her name is Gabriella. That was always what I wanted to name a baby girl if we ever had kids. told me she found out she was caring after we broke up and she, I really, I really don't know. She just never did. I guess she didn't have it in her. <sighs> All right. Up early. I'll see you boys Thursday. But on Thursday he didn't show up, they found him but he asks to stay away, he's not himself. He has to go, but before he does, he warns Errol if he doesn't want to hate himself let him not look in the mirror. And then he asks not to follow him, he needs a break and Errol can't stop filming. The men realize that they have no contract with him, so they will just have to wait. A little later, Errol goes out to get the mail and finds a tape from Noel. He goes to someone else's house and finds a girl and probably a guy lying under a sheet in the bedroom, and by counting the guy falls out, he takes the shot and lets the girl out. She locks herself in the bathroom and calls 911, but there's a boy waiting for him in the hallway. Noel asks him to be careful and runs off. 
The next day they call on the video link and Noel tells him that he's managed to sort himself out and tomorrow he'll meet Michaela and see his daughter for the first time. Errol asks to film the meeting, Noel agrees on the condition that they don't film his daughter's face. And here is their first meeting, Gabriella shows him her drawings and they go to a cafe. In the evening Noel starts drifting around the girl in the parking lot and then gives chase. She doesn't recognize him, it's Monica, his old friend Monica with whom he played in the theater. In the afternoon, Errol offers him psychological help, but he begins to tell a story about how, as children, he and his brother made up stories with an ending when they went to heaven, but it never happened. Errol asks whether heaven is and Noel answers that in the most legendary places, and their last scheduled meeting was at the Eiffel Tower. His name was Ethan and he drowned in the pool when he was 10 and Noel was 9. He hit his head and fell and nobody helped him, there were a lot of people, so Noel concluded, the more people who can help you, the less you think about the danger. He thinks he needs therapy, he wants to change, but he doesn't know how, but he realizes he wants to be a good father to Gabriella. He takes a guitar from a guy nearby and smashes it to vent his anger. Voice message from Errol on October 7th. 2016. Hey, Noel. It's the ever-persistent Errol. <laughs> I know I've left a few of these. But we miss you. Listen, we don't even have to talk about resuming shooting or the project at all. We just want to hear that you're all right. Here are things are coming along for you. We're going to start the editing process soon. Edit as you go, so that'll be rich for confusion and excitement and long slumberless nights. <laughs> anyway, two weeks is a while. Give me a shot when you're feeling up to it, okay? Thanks, buddy. They enlisted him to see a private therapist and did some covert filming. Noel told them how he went through transition, or rather, he didn't, because when he came home after his brother died, Everything had changed, his parents didn't even notice how distant they had become from him. He even cut a hole in the wall with an axe. His father didn't close the garage and he took the axe there. He lost them when he was 12 and left home, according to him everywhere. Noel tells the psychologist that Mikkel is willing to give Gabriella to him for support. Because Mikkel herself is moving out and doesn't want to stress her daughter. Errol quarrels with the cameraman because he filmed Noel's daughter and even corresponded with him. Errol worries about the family because Noel hasn't been in touch for days. The day of installation came, while they were working there was a knock on the door, it was the letter carrier who brought the new recording from Noel. There turns out to be one tape and Errol realizes that this is his house. Noel walks into Brian's room. Today's recording Brian didn't go to school because he had a fever. Noel goes into the bathtub and starts going over the number sheets. When time expired he attacks them. The next day they called each other and apologized to each other. And Noel tells him that Gabriella found out a few hours ago that she was going to live with him, but she reacted as if she had to. Errol asks him for a recording and he agrees. They ponder what kind of relationship Noel had with his father, and then they tell us how he had a seizure in the store and the camera was left in the car. Since no one was hurt or complained, the scene was staged. In the car, he is nervous about what he has done, and a little later he tells us that he has learned a lot during the filming of the movie. The only thing left to do is to learn how to apply that knowledge. His goal was to become a model father, and he asks the audience to love themselves and be themselves, and most importantly not to be afraid of anybody. He recalls the words of a guy who was afraid to let his daughter go out at night. He didn't want her to become plastic with strawberry flavor. They are celebrating filming and passing therapy by Noel at a restaurant, but Noel notices a man. In fourth grade he cheated and made him embarrass himself in front of everyone. He insults the girl and Errol takes him outside, where he yells at them through the glass again. Noel shoots a home vlog with his daughter as they complete the cabin. Noel shows her drawings but he gets the idea that this might be the very paradise they had negotiated with their brother. Noel wanted to go to his father's grave, but after a few minutes he started beating on the tombstone. He is sort of calmed down, but he does it again. At home, Noel is having fun with the camera and deep into the night, Errol comes to see him. 
Noel tells him that he gets up at 4.37 every day so he bypasses the system 35 too early and 40 too late. When Errol comes home he decides to finish filming, but he hears his wife screaming in the hall, she saw the tape of Noel's murder on her laptop. He calls them on a video call and says this is their last connection to him, he says his last words and disconnects. Errol's wife calls 911 and tells them about Noel's shenanigans and that he has a daughter to pick up. She gives his address and Errol hangs up. Noel puts Gabriella in the car, asks if it's a pretty picture and if she's afraid of him. She replies that she's never afraid of anyone with him. They start up, and we hear a recording of the officer interrogating Errol. He realizes that when he gets out of jail, Brian will be 17 and the movie will never be released. But we are shown footage of Noel and as we see it again from Errol's house, he pounces on Lana and strangles her with his hands and then tinfoil, from which she dies. He walks over to the mirror and that's where the movie ends. Support the channel by subscribing, liking and including notifications, because you'll be the first to know about new videos. Share your opinion of the videos in the comments. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next videos.